Hi, John here. Today it's Friday, the 19th of August 2016. Now I'm just preparing myself for my court hearing on Monday uh, with Shannon Withers, uh, my barrister. I'm hoping that he's prepared himself for what I have given him in instructions on how I see the court case unfolding against CIB detective Natalie Flowerdew Brown and the two landowners on 77 Cook Street in Auckland City who conspired together with the tenants on that land block to block the cause of justice with her law on her documents that she used to arrest me with. They linked each other into this mysterious man called John Wanoa in capital letters. <clears throat> now the process started right here where I'm sitting in this room, right in this chair where she arrested me and took my shirt off to take away as evidence and my medication took that too. I was without the medication from the 28th, from the 3rd, sorry, from the 3rd of October 2015 to the 5th when I was released from prison on a bail bond. The point in question here is the bail bond. The police attended 77 Cook Street on the 28th of September 2016 for the record uh, 2015 um, that it took them from the 28th of September 2015 to the 3rd of October 2015 to come around and race me with 12 police <clears throat> that long. So that's 28, 29, 28, 29, 30, plus three more days. Six days, Shannon, six days to come and arrest me. It gave Natalie Flower Dew Brown six days of thinking how is she going to arrest me when the problem was the landowners put the tenants up in front of me and the police on this side of them all the way through. That was not the only time that the police tampered with my information. The last one was Tim Duffy, another detective before that in the CIB, the Criminal Investigation Bureau part. You see, they were protecting the fraud landowners and the fraud land conveyancing lawyers. And the detective before that in the CIB fraud unit at the back of the police station in Auckland, Aaron Pasco, he was the one that tampered with this case on those landowners on Cook Street to say, no, it's not a good idea to go into the land block. He opened his mouth right then. I cited him. I cited him and issued three affidavits each time, Shannon. You want to understand how this works. Uh, you're not exactly a con contract lawyer, but you have experts in your uh, Vulcan chambers, lawyers and barristers, who would know the laws of New Zealand, Crimes Act 1961 and Crimes Act 1951, to know how this works. There's a number of things here happening with that land in order to keep the landowners protected by the police. All the way through from 2008, 
and then again in 2012. Four years of research have gone through to make sure I've got my tracks legally covered. I have to stick up for myself as a native to know everything about our native lands. That's mischievous people are operating their Crown corporate businesses on under the Crown corporate law. Right? There's a number of different jurisdictions crossing each other. And Natalie had six days to figure out how she was going to attack me and arrest me after six days of looking around. She came up with these documents here to arrest me with. She fashioned and created and designed and forged herself. I'm just going to explain how the names have changed from a lower case. She's designed the lower case, then the upper case in at least four different John One Hours. You can see I'm putting them on Facebook right now with this video and the other videos and send it off to my barrister. I'm teaching him how to be a contract lawyer from a native point of view under a King's Bench Court Sheriff's orders that I have property arrest warrants of our own that's authenticated through this flag and King Itoru I'm just about to read. Again, just to let him know that my authority is running under his authority that's going straight into Britain under the new company called Moai Bauhaus Group Limited. Limited. Okay, that company is now the creditor over this lot. Very serious allegations I make on this video today to you Shannon that the law of the Vatican is inside this flag and inside my hat with the eight point star on it with the seal and the crown of King William on it okay that's the authority I am holding in that court in Auckland District Court on Monday the 22nd right in front of the whole world they are watching this video, Shannon, on Facebook and YouTube. So they are taking stock of what you say, of what I instruct you to say on my behalf, because they won't listen to me. I'm not a barrister inside your court. I am a legal advocate inside the King's Bench Court. If I stand in that court, on Monday, that's who I am. I have my hat here. Shannon, I'll be taking this and putting it in my pocket. Right? I'll be carrying this all around because this is my authority and this flag. I've got a little flag too. Right? I won't wear my shirt with my flag on it because that's my authority. I'm walking into that courthouse on Monday next week with it. Alright? So there you are, people. That is my authority of that crown on the top of the eight-point star St. Patrick's Order of the New World Order under this king, William, on his horse and his ship of admiralty in the background. You won't get anything higher than that in the world. John Key's got nothing on this. John Key has just got a whim and relies on people to vote him in. Unfortunately for all the people who vote him in, you're going to get a bill from this and the new company, My Powerhouse Group. Limited Limited in London. That's under the UK jurisdiction inside this flag and the eight point stars, four corner of the earth and our acts of parliament remains 
1830-1837 laws apply on our Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court and the chief I'm just about to ring shortly. So you'll see when I put these uh, documents of my own court case, event chronology P02267728 this is from the police and Natalie Flowerdew Brown that starts off with my case and someone putting it together has written my name in handwriting John in lowercase and Wanoa in uppercase you see the mischievous person who did this more than likely is Natalie Flowerdew Brown because she signed it on the next page she signed it. So the next page, it's got my name as Hoani Wanoa in lower case. Hoani Wanoa in lower case. Case number CRI 2015-004-010085 for case review. 56 Criminal Procedures Act 2011. This is, this is getting into the human rights area where they have violated me with my, my medication and took, took my medication away on the 3rd and I had to wait till I was released on the 5th with the bail bond from prison and without my medication for that time. They could have killed me. They had no regard for me while I was in prison asking for my medication. Nothing. I got nothing. I got, they weren't worried about me. This is, this is the disregard for my health because I am on medication. Here, medication. I am on medication. That one. That one. That one, that one, enough to sink a battleship, that one, that one, you wonder why I'm still alive, that one, that one, And there one. Okay, so she took my medication away as evidence against me. As if I'm a druggie. Well, I am by the looks of this one. But she took away my rights to have my medication every day as prescribed by a doctor. That's a violation on human rights on this document here I'm, I'm looking at now that's um, oh where have you gone anyway that seems to have lost everything I pressed the wrong button uh, chronology, oh that's where I am, I went from there to notice to unrepresented de defendant for case review under the, this is under the um, Criminal Procedures Act 2011 section 56 right so in this one my name is is Hoani Wanoa, H O A N I Wanoa, in lower case. You see how they're changing around each time. I put these on so I show you how they're mischievous, fraudulent with your name. Now, this one here, it's got the Auckland Central Police Station, and my name is John Wanoa in capitals. You see, these 
they're mixing up this other trustee name that they're fashioning in these fraud documents. I'm calling these documents fraud, Shannon. I'm just pointing them out. DOCLOC number 105930 bar 6844, CRN number 15004012803, Criminal Disclosures Act. And it's Detective Natalie Flower Dew Brown in lower case who signed it. Right? Detective Natalie Flower Dew Brown, Auckland City CIB, and her phone number 093. 02604. So you can see that she put my name, wrote it, handwrited my name as John Wanoa in capital. Instead of just putting straight out, it was put like that because they're defrauding me and you people with the same uh, the same um, scenario case of defrauding to make money out of you. In this events chronology, this is all the history of what happened. She has put in her handwriting, John Wanoa, in uppercase, bold, uppercase, and John in lowercase. You see how mischievous and fraudulent, you're not allowed to do that because Pope Francis destroyed his laws and this scam, uh, um, scam, operating business, making money out of people. He destroyed all these laws. That's what I'm saying to you, Shannon. They cannot use these instruments on me. I'm using Pope Francis citing his acts, and I gave them to you. I gave them to you. This video is for you, Shannon. <clears throat> I've already given you an um, 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 video with instructions from me, the King's Bench Court, inside that court. When I walk in there, I'm a King's Bench Court Sheriff judge on our own native land. Okay? You can't tell me I'm not the owner. I am the owner, if I say so, because there's other chiefs that have their ownership on. Show me, show me the evidence. Show me the title. I've got all the titles here for Auckland. Right? No one's trotting up. That's why they won't answer. That's why the land conveyancing lawyers are hiding behind the police. That's what I'm exposing here. Now here, Detective Natalie Flower Dew Brown has signed <clears throat> has signed this document, this next one. I'm putting these on Facebook to show you exactly what she did. In the six days it took her, Shannon, to come around and bring those papers, these papers, these papers, to arrest me. Right? With this logo. That's all they got. They're, they're only going on this police logo, which is no authority to bring this lot around to arrest me. You got a job in front of you a barrister under the bar to challenge these documents. This is an offence on its own. I'm, I'm saying inside the King's Bench Court with his flag from Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court and Kingi, the chief of the Ngāpui tribes, that you have defrauded us. You have defrauded us. Natalie Flower Dew Brown, because she's conspired with the landowners and the land conveyancing lawyers of 77 Cook Street with all of this documents you created, designed, and forged. All the statements in here are in legalese. Now, I ask you, Shannon, to get those disclosures of the statements from those people I'm accusing on the land block that are tenants, third parties. They are not the landowners. I wanted, I've been trying for a long time, since 2012, to bring those uh, those landowners and their convincing lawyers in front of me. They've failed. 
that, that this was an ongoing case where I was trying to deal with them myself. And they failed to do that. Even their barristers and lawyers failed every time I made a three-day affidavit. One 72-hour affidavit. When that refused, I took another one and waited around for another 72 hours, three days. And then I took the third one. The third one constitutes law. It made law by default of that land block more than once, right back to the first owners in 2008, 2012, and now 2016. Right? I repeated this exercise as a native here, landowner of that property. Okay? So that's this document here. She signed. As usual, no date. No date. Disclosure. Right? Disclose very little. No dates on these documents. In accordance with the requirements of Section 13, Bracket 1 of the Criminal Disclosure Act 2008 encloses a copy of all relevant information held on the police investigation prosecution file other than information already disclosed or information withheld under sections 15 to 18 of the Criminal Disclosure Act 2008. The attached disclosure index records all re relevant information on the file and which items have been disclosed. Where documents are not disclosed, the index identifies the reason for their non-disclosure. They are hiding the fraud. You have the right to apply in writing for particular additional information under Section 14 by 1 of the Criminal Disclosure Act 2008. Further requests for disclosure should be in writing. So now, my barrister has been paid from my birth certificate and Mr. John Wanoa account trustee, right? He has been paid to put all these things together for me. And so the police have dipped their fingers in too. And the court's judges have dipped their fingers into that money too. Okay? And everybody else has dipped their money into it. So that's this document. And then the next one, it's got my name again. John, lowercase, and then big capitals, uppercase, which is forbidden by Pope Francis and the Vatican City laws, the highest laws in the world, here, that I'm wearing, the Vatican, and this, King's Law, New World Order, law, that I'm practicing now, right in front of you, and this CRN number is the same as the other one, um, Auckland Police Station, copy of charging documents, copy of charging documents. So she's swearing to all of this. There's her signature again. Um, don't give much out. They don't give much out. This is, uh, I'm exposing the fraud inside the police force. It's rampant. Now this one here, trespass notice. Now th this is the irony. The irony of this is this. I've told you the two, three different ways they're making my name into this other John one hour that I want disclosed. And this one here, Trespass Warning, under the Trespass Act 1980, to Hawani, in brackets, John, in bold capitals, and bold capitals, Wanoa. Why are you doing this, Natalie Flower Do Brown? Why are you making my name change around more than once? There's at least four times that name has changed. Why? That's why I'm asking, Shannon. She has to answer to this. What is the significance of this Hoani, John, Wanoa, in all capital letters? What, why the significance of that? You have to tell me. You have to tell me. I'm putting you on the spot. You're going to have to tell who that person is and where is he. I want him in the court on Monday. Shannon, I waited around long enough for you to gather everything together 
because you had all the other lawyers in your office to get all this information about this scum scam that's going on on our land. Show me anybody whose land this is and I'll tell you who it is. It belongs to the native. Okay? You haven't bought the thing out yet. You haven't got clear title. I've got it here. So you've got that to worry about now that I've got the British behind me with that company, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Limited. That's my partner with Kingi Todo and this flag up in Ngāpui on his land. Okay? Now I've been trespassed from 70 Shortland Street. That's where their offices of those two scumbags, landowners, who are going to get locked up, conspiring with Natalie Flower Drew Brown and Tim Duffy and Aaron Pascoe, three CIB detectives who have protected these scam bags, landowners, from this fraudulent mortgage title land. That I want back on Monday and that account with all that money right back 67 years of it of scamming my birth certificate people this is a straight fraud that i'm exposing here i knew all along right through the years what they're up to but they had to catch them committing the crimes act 1961 and 1960 51 New Zealand Crimes Act right here these are the documents that catches them out the other place where I'm um, trespassed is Tournament Group Limited on it doesn't say it, do, it does not say the other address that's all it says I've got a counterclaim Shannon I told you when we go to court I am really prepared. I've done my homework. I've done my homework since 2008 on this land. That's 10 years. 10 years to know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And I've got the authority here. I've got the ruling authority here to speak like a king for a king. Okay, that's what I'm saying about Kingi Totoro, following what I'm saying. Now she has signed her name, not in uppercase, but lowercase, on the 30th of October 2015. This is when she made a trespass notice. Now, there's no one's name on it saying who trespassed me. It doesn't say anything. It just says keep off the land. It doesn't say the landowners. They're hiding away. To you, James Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree, I visited your office three times on three different occasions and gave you 21 uh, three day notice, 72 hour notice to refute my title on that land block appears you don't know much about land law neither does your land conveyancing lawyers because they're caught up in this fraud too they're liable you're liable now because this silly policewoman libeled the whole lot of you and libeled the whole police force the government the prime minister and the governor general and the queen you're caught out you're under this new world order now with me straight from Britain, Navy, and the government, Westminster, Parliament, the new Parliament that's coming up. Okay, so this is this document, and then the next one is Notice of Bail to the Defendant. This is, this is the other offensive document. You see how it's constructed with the capital letters? This is the one that makes the money, the bail bond. 
Yeah, this is the blackmail part, Shannon. Why do I have to tell you this? You should know this. Why is it that every lawyer won't talk about this? I'm telling you now, specifically, to listen to what I'm saying, because I have the authority to talk straight to the land that's in question here for a long time. I'm trying to hold people to account for mortgage fraud. I'm a mortgage broker and a bank <coughs> bank financier in my early days in real estate. So I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm doing when it comes to land further from native titles into mortgage titles from a king that made these land titles in the first place. It wasn't the queen. It was King William that put these land titles together. Okay? And a Scottish company called Monica Land Company that put these titles here on that 77 Cook Street together. Didn't put our name on it, did they? Shannon? They failed to put our names on the title as they're supposed to under Section 145 and 145A of the 1952 Land Transfer Act. There. Failed. I don't have to go over that. It's my word against anybody's word to any titles in this country. Show me your title. Notice of bail. It's got my, she's put my name. Prosecutor is the police department. No, the prosecutor is a person with two legs, two eyes, one mouth, and a brain. That's who the prosecutor is, not police department, because that's not someone that can talk in front of me, doing the talking, okay, in the flesh and blood. Whoever opens their mouth in front of me under a King's Bench Court law is in trouble if they are challenging my authority and jurisdiction of this land. Okay, did you hear that, Shannon? I'm saying these things because I have a right to say it in front of you and the government here. My name as defendant is put in lower case. Why all of a sudden, when it's payday, and this is the blackmail, they get me to sign so they can go straight into somewhere where the big part of money is, might be billions of pounds or dollars, where they're helping themselves to all this time from the 28th of September to today's date, the 19th of August 2016, they've been helping themselves in this pot of money that's got this name John Wanoa on it. And now I sign this bail bond to this name they've put on this one as lowercase. Hawani Wanoa. Why all of a sudden they change from John and bounce to Hawani Wanoa after the other one with the capital letters as Hawani Wanoa? One minute and then now this bond with my lowercase name, which is me in Rio, they've stung me the real one and arrested the other one with the capital letter. They arrested me with this lowercase, with the money, instead of the other John Wanoa with capital letters. Can you see what I'm saying, people, in the world? Because it's no different to America, Canada, Australia, India, Africa, in the Commonwealth countries, Britain. It's no different. They're doing it to you too. I'm just showing you. They arrested me. I had to get arrested to catch them. I had plenty of time to think in prison. That was 3rd of October when they arrested me here, to the 5th. 3rd, 4th, 5th. Three days to figure it out before I went into the court in front of Judge Dave Fraser. Uh, uh, Grant Fraser. Judge Grant Fraser. Then when... We were in prison. I wrote out, scribbled out what the Pope said. Libeled him one by one. Right? And he's got no queen above his head. He's got a picture of the queen above his head in his court. 
I said to him, you've got no queen. She's in the EU Parliament, there's a conflict of interest. You have no sovereignty from Britain in your court. You have no seal from Westminster to be talking about the queen or monarch or sovereign from Britain, except this one in the king's side, straight to Britain with our flag. Yeah. Right? So it just shows you how much I know about monarchs and sovereigns and kings and queens. The queen is corrupted on his side. That's why it's full of debt. You're full of debt there and you're facing me in the Auckland District Court as a King's Bench Court Sheriff, Sheriff, Judge can call myself what I like because that's the new world order, the highest order and court in the world. The highest law in the world is in my head. Okay, so now I'm just pointing out the PRN number is 199536, driver's license number BK656659. That's to identify me, the real person, natural. And my date of birth, 8th of August, 1949. 67 years they've had the use of my birth certificate to screw money out of somewhere where they've stacked everybody else's. I'm going after it. I'm going after it because I have the authority of a king to do it. He created the laws that they're using. They got their laws from the Vatican. They had nowhere else to get the UCC law, Canon's law, courier law, civil law, and the Admiralty law of mortgage, liens, and bank laws came from the Vatican, came from King William IV. That's it. That's it. Now he's taken your laws away, given by this king, and left you vulnerable and liable. That's what he says. Liable anybody that causes fraud using his laws, that he has destroyed all his laws and trusts. That's why I'm saying, Shannon, I put this on the record in that court, that when I come there, I'm talking from authority of a king. And you and your bar association supposed to administer these laws correctly on my behalf. You're there for me to correct the law and adhere, adhere legally. This is legally to what I'm saying. This is a corporation trust of a king. I told you, you got that one, that the other side, the queen's corporate trusts are defunct. They are illegal unconstitutional and fraudulent to use against me. Whoever it is against, it's up to them. But in the jurisdiction of mortgages, lands, debt instruments are forbidden to be in that court in front of me. So that's what I want you to do, strike it out and arrest all those people, I got their names on Facebook. Otherwise, it's going straight into the High Court of Admiralty in London, and they'll rule on it straight out. You will all be cited straight off after Monday's court hearing, if it's not demolished and got rid of, settled with the judge. I want this account with Natalie Flower Dew Brown settled, and these trespass orders, in this charge of forced entry removed from my name and I'm going in with our own warrant to seize that land and lock them up. I'm saying to you, Shannon, tell the judge because I'm saying it with authority to Take the police out of my road because they're hiding the fraud as um, 
perverting the course of justice and corrupting New Zealand law, Crimes Act law, and the laws of New Zealand. They have corrupted the whole legal justice system in this country, and the world for that matter, in the same defunct law system that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama is making a mess of in America with this admiralty law. They are abusing our law. That law belongs to us, the native. Contract. Contract? Natalie Flower Dew Brown came here and put me into her contract with these documents. Okay? So, Shannon, I'm telling you, I'm putting her into a contract with my contract. It's defaulted on that block of land with those other landowners and the ones before that and the ones before that. They're all defaulted contract with this flag and this eight point star. Right? You're liable. Cite Pope Francis acts of motu proprio on my documents. In on your documents to give to the judge. He has to rule on that authority of jurisdiction. He can't pass it into another higher court because I don't want to go into any other court. I want it settled inside that court. I only want the money back from my birth certificate at my property and any inheritance inside that name that has been used to defame me, to defraud me and to defame my personality and higher intelligence to search you out. Okay? She's done a lot of research on me. I'm doing a lot of research on her and every other policeman who is breaking the law in this country, right in front of me, and the British military, navy, and government. I'm them now, over there in England, as a business, corporate trust business as usual under the new British government system that's going to clean out your side of Queen and fraudulent monarch. Okay, so that's that page. I've, I think I've explained that enough. Then my name is defended on the bottom. It says, I, Hoani Wano, in lowercase, defendant, have received a copy of this notice of bail and I understand the conditions. The conditions in there was that the charges against the defendant have been adjourned. The defendant has been granted bail. The defendant is released on condition that the defendant attends personally at the Auckland District Court on Tuesday, the 17th day of November 2015 at 10 OOAM. The following conditions of bail have, has been imposed. Reside at Unit 07B, Bar 16 Park Avenue, Odahu, Auckland 1062. That's here. Not to go to or be found within Auckland CBD unless attending court. Not to go to or be found within one kilometre of the address of 77 Cook Street, Auckland, unless attending the court not to associate or have contact directly or indirectly with the victims. You see, they're hiding the victims who they say I've injured. I didn't injure anyone. I didn't go into the office and yank them out. It wasn't me. It was the other marshals on contract. I put them on contract to do what they did because they said they can do it. They got their badges and everything. So I thought, I don't know them before. They're just picked out of the phone book, just the same as everybody else advertising themselves. And they made themselves on Facebook be known. Sure, they're Maoris, but I left that job to them. I stood out on the road. And then when the head man there on my behalf, uh, Marish, Marish, 
Gavin Marish, John Gavin Don Marish, said to me, John, you better come in because um, the police said that's okay. Right? So with that, I went in there and then the policewoman said to me, are you John Wano? I said, yes, I got a call from Gavin to come in because she said it was right to come in to talk. Right? That's, and then I get trespassed for doing that. This, this is crazy. This is crazy to, to tell me um, uh, that had nothing to do with it, that I'm part of it. Right? I'm part of what happened to those people. Those people set it up. They set it up. The owners set these people in their office to put up a fight against me and anybody else trying to stop them. Instead of the owners, because I said, the second time I went to that property to issue the tenants in their office with notice, I said, you better make sure the owners come down here. They didn't. They didn't. They just took it on themselves. So really, Shannon, they committed themselves to cause all the ruckus of a complaint they set up to ring the police to come. Because I warned them, I warned them and the CIB that I'm going to come in there. I warned them that I was going there not to ring the police. Because I had discussed this with the police in the front office and the back office. The front office is the common law side. The back office is where all the fraud is in the CIB. They're all scam in there. I'm telling you, I'm saying it on this video. It's a scam outfit in the back there, screwing money off the public. And I'm showing you how they do it with this name calling and changing names, playing around with language. That's why English language is a bastard language. The Maoris always knew that. They can fiddle around with language and fool you and, and deceive you. They have deceived me and you of hooking money out of you. Instead of telling you, oh, you've got one billion pounds in dollars in your account we're going to take a million off no they don't tell you that they won't even tell you the treaty of white is fraud they don't tell you much it's, it's fraud because it's got no contract in there see it it's all being scammed all the way and there's jerry mataparai andrews that's his real surname andrew not mataparai it's andrew he's fooling around with us this king is very annoyed with him going to England to fill the Queen's fraud footsteps in England and sell the rest of Maori land off. Right? The titles here have got Maori land all over it. Well, that's nothing to do with native. It belongs to John Key's government. They've defrauded us of our native title under Maui Hapu. Hapu, if you're listening, have been screwed as much as the citizens of this country have been screwed the same way as they've screwed me i let them screw me to show you okay all you people in the world throw away those documents it's a waste of my time people trying to tell me how to do things in the ucc law and the civil law canon law and all the rest of it because it's demolished if you use it you're just as much to blame it's ignorance that makes them wealthy people okay the ignorance is going to cost you John Key and you Natalie Flower Dew Brown is not that clever after all six days to figure out how to arrest me I'm I'm sorry you got that one wrong as you will find out the British will finish this lot off okay deputy registrar signed it he signed this bail bond with me so that's that man with two legs in the court, the same as uh, uh, the other registrar. What's his name? Uh, uh, O'Shaughnessy. Dave O'Shaughnessy. He signed the same as this one. Dave O'Shaughnessy 
signed the PRN number 15336009979 on the 11th of August 2011 to take $20 out of my birth certificate, Mysterious John Wanawa, in this capital game. It's a game of fraud. They took the, the, the automatic payment straight out past me. When my benefit came out, it was minus 20 on the balance. It just shows nothing. It doesn't show anything. You have to get it from an account from WINS. When WINS give you an account, it shows $20 deducted, gone around the corner. Right? And it went straight from there to a trust account that WINS put together and then sent it off to Auckland District Court Corporation Company. It's always two legs, two eyes, two hands, mischievous hands, and maybe two brains, signing all these things to make it effective work for them, to make money. Okay? So the court says, I have to pay it. But when stopped it, and then the court couldn't take the money, bribe, from WINS. WINS is another corporate company, WINS, Crown Corporate Company, stopped the payment because they knew I was putting the asset on them that they're liable. See? So from then on, no more money was going out of my benefit. And so nothing left to say. Apart from affidavits I had given David Shennessy, I'm going to give him the bill of a trillion pounds on each one's head. You hear that, what I said, Shannon? I have got a bounty under this New World Order, British government, and NATO contract, Kingi Tauroa Chief, Waitangi, Napui contract, to bill anybody one trillion pounds each for stepping in our road of a two-way contract between here and Westminster and the Navy there. You are third party. Natalie Flaudu Brown. You are third party that came in tempered with my defaulted contract with those landowners who are here hiding behind the lawyers and you, the police. You're liable the whole lot of them. Everyone who touched those documents you put together here. All these documents you did. And ran away. The same as Dave O'Shaughnessy. He ran away too. Because he didn't want me taking them into court. I could have taken them into court. Once I get this company going, you're all going into court, each one of you. There's 43 of you got in my road on that land block. All those cheeky ones in there, in that land block, all those cheeky people, and those ones in the office, those women, they're going into prison. That's what I'm saying on this video. Because you've conspired to defraud me, the landowner, my right to my land that you are committing crimes on. Okay, that wasn't very clever of you to do that. So here, I signed this bail bond on the 5th day of October 2015 as Hawani Wanoa in lower case. When you go back to the other one of the Hawani Wanoa, here it is, trespass notice, is in capital letters. So that person, Hawani John Wanoa, is another mirrored identi identity of this PRN number, person, <coughs> corporate person, thug, pirate, who is acting as if they are me. That is not me, that they're trespassing. When I go anywhere, I don't use that name of fashion. I'm always John. Not that. Not, not like that. They have constructed this to defraud all of you. This is what I'm going them for all that money back. We have a legal right to seize it all. 
it's amazing. And here's what Natalie Flower Dew Brown signed. My name is John in lowercase and uppercase bold capital letters Wanoa. You see, she had a hand in this name changing fictitious person of fraudulent means to extract money out of a big pile of money that I signed as a lowercase in the end for someone, the trustee of those names, altogether those names that I just said, to pick the money up with those names somewhere. Shannon, I want you to put those people, there's three of them. I'll start again. I'll, 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 make, I'll, I'll get this one right for you, people watching. We've got Hawani Wanoa in lowercase. You see, they've got John Wanoa and Hawani Wanoa in lowercase. That's two of me, natural persons. You see, they're playing around with you and your identity as identity theft. They've got identity theft going on right in front of you. Now here we have my name <coughs> with Natalie Flower Dew Brown signing it as John Wanoa, all caps, Wanoa, and again she's signed another document with the same name, Mr. Wanoa, right? See there's two, John, uppercase, uh, and Wanoa, uppercase, that's one John Wanoa. And there she signed again on another day, Mr. Wanoa. These are documents she's signing with the CRN numbers on it. Okay, so I'm telling you the, 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 the de deceptive language. Hoani Wanoa in lowercase. Um, and somebody that'll be her in the event chronology has put my name as John in lowercase in handwriting and uppercase Wanoa. She has mischievously written her handwriting there of me as somebody else. That trustee person, I want these, that's another Wanoa. You see, that's, a, a, that's another Wanoa. Deputy Registrar. That's Hawani Wanoa in lowercase. See, that's, I'll count them. That's one. Hawani Wanoa in lowercase. That's the deputy register with the bail bond. Then the events chronology with my name in capital. That's two. John in lower. Surname in capital. Two. And this one, Hawani Wanoa uh, in lowercase. That's still, that's, that's two. Two names have changed, and John Wanoa, and that's two, and John Wanoa, um, with the surname in capitals, and Hawani, John Wanoa in capitals, three. Three times the name has changed, and Mr. Wanoa, four. Four times that name has changed. Four times this, this four Mysterious John Wanoa's out there, walking around. Okay, I want them brought into court and charged with taking money out of an account I signed. Count and that John Wanoa countersigned it. I want to see if he's a white man or a brown man like me. You see, who is going to be turning up in court as John Wanoa? watch this space okay so that's all i want to do there i'll ring kingy now now that i've gone through that i wanted to spend a bit of time on that because it's very important for me to explain to you people watching what i'm doing here to call into account these people defrauding you and me the public of new zealand Come on, Kingy. What's up? Hello? Hello, Kingy. John here. Hey, you mate. I'll go down to Rotorua tomorrow with my girls, my two girls. 
uh, Catherine coming back from Australia, and um, she coming down with Ashley with me to Rotorua to Morris for lunch, and we're going we're going to go over what I'm doing online uh, with the with a new company now, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited in in, in in London. It's registered now; they've accepted it. So that's our that's our other part from you at Waitangi on that Marae thingy. I'm starting to put it all together now for Monday. And um, so that's this is how we get our land back and, and and the birth certificate, I'm just putting it online now, that the barrister has to to tell the judge from me representing you you in the Marae authority to get all that money back that they've stolen off me. Okay? And, and 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 you didn't need to come on Monday if you're busy. I I, I just yeah no it doesn't matter because I'm just going to watch. I don't have to. I, I don't need anybody being there. I'm going there so that they wrap it up. But it's certainly looking good now. Um, I've got investors in Australia in uh, in Trump Towers. They've been watching the tidal turbines. And it's going to take off. That's why I wanted Moira and, and the girls to pick up behind me with the counts and, and, and to help to, uh, to get all the share things going with the other ones in Britain. I've got some other ones in Britain. This is where we get the funding to do everything and, and um, get ready with the flag going up on the 28th uh, with straight to Britain because they caught on over there now. They've caught on with what I'm doing here. Um, with that flag and the contract, if that's all it is, a contract and bank, and so that's how we that's how we become financial overnight, Kenny. I, I just thought I'd let you know, and and that's all I need to say, really. It'll it, it'll happen on Monday. The, the the barrister should not falter because I've given them all the acts of the Pope, destroyed all their their things. They can't use those on me. And also um, the acts of the Crimes Act that um, that policewoman did to me is is a fraud. Is a fraud thing. Okay, okay that's all. See you. See you. Right. That's key. There you go. I just talked to the chief of the native people here, Maori on one side, and Hapu on this other side. The iwi on that side. And the hapu on this side. You got Maori's on this side, and Maori's on this side. You got Maui on this side, and Maui on this side. You see, the Queen is using Maui on that side. And we're using Maui on this side. Who's Maui? Is he? You see. So it's up to the people to draw your own conclusions from what I'm saying on this video. It's for educational purposes. It's not to put anybody down, but to bring people to account for the fraudulent language used in documents to screw you out of your inheritance, whether it be land, property, birth certificates, the sky, water, natural resources, minerals, gold, anything that has been derived from the use of admiralty law of the sea and a king or a queen, whichever side you want to be on. So I'm happy now that the chief is happy. That makes two happies in one day. To my friend Moira, tomorrow, Rotorua, coming down to see you. And I hope we have a nice talk and a nice lunch. The only way you get to my heart is to my stomach. And Moira does a beautiful job that. So I hope my girls will listen to you, being a well-traveled woman and of business mystique and precision and also elegance. I hope they will take some of that from you tomorrow. And to Jamie, my uh, secretary, She's still my secretary, even though she's not online very much. She's got a big job looking after her little kids. And she called me, which is nice, to see how I'm getting on. I says, oh,
just making it. No, I joke. Um, but I could have done with a hand from her um, in learning what to do. Now that we've come this far, we've come together a long way with building up this company, my powerhouse group, limited now. So she's over the moon that it's been accepted on the company's office, house, company's house in London, which gives us another rung up the ladder of that top end of commerce. We are a commerce flag people. The water people in the Pacific have been trading for years, not in money, but in goods um, and materials from the land, whether it's logs or food, provisions or other matters, was a trade barter. They still can do that with this flag when we have opened up the way for them and let them run with the rest of the people in the world to get the numbers up on the shareholding. We are looking for numbers of membership and already we have a investment company in Australia and one in uh, Trump House. Um, finding it very difficult to find time find time to knock up the constitution of the company and the updated constitution that is and the articles of association and um, share uh, um, share register um, um, articles of association I've got to put all those together next week within 15 days to furnish into the company's house in London um, uh, for uh, these companies to take hold of the uh, shareholding and to market it themselves. I'm hoping that my daughters will take some interest in it, not that I'm forcing them to do so, but it would be nice to have them have some input and interest in it, even though it's a little bit. Um, then it would be nice for them to work in with Moira, Rotorua, they have a wonderful family there. It's like my family now. De, 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 de. She's a Russell, from Russell up north, Kingy's people. And she knows all about how Maoris live up there in Hokianga Harbour. She lived in Hokianga Harbour for a long time. And knows a lot about Napoli. So she's not short of that. She was up there the last time with me. And um, is willing to help um, Napoli as much as she can uh, with their history. She's very good on it. She's writing a book of King John. Well, it's sort of saying, I'm a king, but really it's the king of the sea that I'm um, referring to as such a king as commerce. King of commerce part, not so much a king of England, but I'm talking for King William until the King steps in, King Ernest Augustus V steps in to Westminster and I can only say at this stage that I'll nominate him as the King to take over from the Queen who has left and gone into EU Parliament. There's a conflict of interest on this side, Shannon. In that court, the Queen is not there. The Queen is not honouring the Treaty of Waitangi because she's gone. She might be in England, dancing around the place, but people are fooled and thinking that all is well. No, not all is well, because she's flooding the place out with immigrants, and it's not the same Britain as it was before. It's all going to hell and blazes. It was meant to be failure. It was set up to fail on the Queen's side. The King has to step in and fix it with this. The king has to step in with his New World Order, St. Patrick's Church Order, and clear the rubbish out and the Vatican stealing St. Patrick's Church and put it back where it should be with us in Westminster and the real people. Okay? So Nicola Sturgeon is 
first Prime Minister of Scotland, is mischievous to side with the EU Parliament, which is just a breakaway group. It's nothing underneath it. It's another one of these corporate structures that has no title. They're borrowing it from all the other countries, right? Like the UN and NATO. They're borrowing another country's mana and authority to build themselves as a private organization. This is private. Everything that's King's Admiralty is private contract. They're going under somebody's authority, Shannon. I'm saying you can't get any higher than this law. Okay? So, people, you're watching? It's right up to the judge now. I think it's Collins, the judge in the Auckland District Court. If you're watching this video, this is for you. You have to make a choice because the registrar... She is a sheriff, just like me. I'm a sheriff because I'm allowed to be a sheriff. My chief was just on the phone. And he says, go ahead, make my day. You see? So he's happy with what I do because I check all the time with him. It's not my call to flag it's not for you. I'm talking for its corporate side of trusts and corporations and banks and money and everything evil that was put there for to stop piracy and fraud. This is a act of war, state of emergency flag for pirates that Obama's using this through the Queen, the bad Queen, Elizabeth, is allowing him to usurp this power as if the citizens of America and the Commonwealth are the pirates, and they're not. We're turning it around the other way with my powerhouse group, Limited, Limited, two Limiteds, and the British Navy to go after them and seize all their property for breaking our law between us, the native Hapu of the Pacific Islands, including the Pacific Islands because they are native to Moai statute doctrines of discovery title right through the Pacific Islands that's part of the British title that I'm holding as that land in the sea is partners with Britain the first claim to the authority of King William IV, King Ernest Augustus I, King George III, the father, and the other brother, King Ernest Augustus I and King William IV. The three brothers and their father, King George III, and King William III, who got this St. Patrick's Order back off the Catholics and booted King James II out of the throne. We're, go we're about to kick everyone off out of the throne and the upper house, House of Lords, out. Out they go. You people over there in Britain, the House of Lords, you don't need them when you've got a king. You've got a king there already. King Ernest Augustus V, he's alive and well. Same age as me. I'm putting him in there to run Britain, UK, Commonwealth of the World, and Maui. Crown. Two crowns. King Ernest Augustus and his son, who will succeed to him. King Ernest, uh, Prince Regent, Ernest Augustus, 39 years old. Okay? He's up and coming as your king and our king that I'm swearing my oath to those two and King William IV and Maui statue no more title to the world so I think that's about it with this video is quite long but I wanted to speak to Kingy because he didn't have to come to my court hearing on Monday I'm 
quite happy to sit there and watch it unfold. I've sent the last bits, these last bits to my barrister so that he can put together my case, specifically the documents. These are corrupted. These documents are corrupted, the whole lot of them, that Natalie put together, that they've all touched their hands on it, is corrupted. The police in Auckland is corrupted. That's all I can say about them. That's for them to deny it in front of me and my chiefs. I'm here for all the chiefs of this country and the Pacific Islands, kings in, in the Pacific Islands and queens in the Pacific Islands. For you, I can only say I'm here for you to carry out the law side between here and Britain and rebuild Britain like how it should be. Make Britain great again. Remove all the threats out of there, ISIS and all the rest of it. That's an invention of the Rothschilds. We'll go after the Rothschilds with this pound note, Shannon. We're going after them with this company in England, my powerhouse group limited. The memorial is there. The memorial there in the museum of Moai, the first Moai Queen Victoria took off East Island in 1868. That Maui is our title. I'm speaking straight there to that, to Kingi on Watangi Marae, straight to that Maui, straight to East Island, straight to <coughs> Mopiti Island in Kaivi and Rapa Nui, Raiate Islands and Aotea New Zealand. Okay? That's who I'm speaking for today on this video as an authority of those chiefs and those hapu natives. Straight to the king, William. And that's about it. That'll do. Have a nice weekend, all of you. And Jamie, you might like to go down to Port Awanui, down the east coast, watch the sun come up, and come to our meeting on the 27th, next week, that is, Saturday, and Desmond will, will be coming from Gisborne, uh, my nephew, but you can come down and have a part in the meeting to learn something amongst our people there at Rotoria of Te Horo Morai on the end of Port Awanui Road and I'll put a notice out in the Gisborne Herald on Monday and it should be on the radio Ngāti Pro and on Radio Waipi here should be advertising that but um, come down if you want I'll be going driving down with the dive gear or the drone and, and fishing rods and go and have a little bit of time there um, and uh, come back and get back into the constitution for the company and those investors waiting. So we have a lot on our plate at the moment, but we'll get through it. Not so much to worry about. Okay, thank you very much. See you later. Bye.